Hi, I'm Dave Akins with Savvy Optics Corp. And this video is about the reflected light inspection method. The reflected light inspection method is described in the ANSI and ISO standards for surface imperfections, but it's also compatible with NXC of mil perf 13830B for scratch and dig. This reflected light method is going to be done using an SP11 black box. The SP11 black box is a powder coat aluminum box constructed of all clean room compatible materials with a light source, a dimmer switch, and a power switch. The SP11 also comes with a photometer, which is used to set the light level to be consistent with the ANSI and ISO standards. In the case of the reflected light method, which is also described on an information card that comes with the box. The first step in the inspection method is to actually measure the light level in lux at the position where I'm going to be doing the inspection. Now for the reflected light setup, unlike the transmitted method where I, there is no requirement on where I can put my eye with respect to the inspection, in the reflected light setup, I need to be 45 centimeters or 18 inches away which is roughly in the middle of the light box if I'm sitting normally. Right now, the power meter says I'm just over a thousand lux. I'd like to get that a lot closer to the maximum of 2,800 lux. So we'll turn that light level up. And I can see that if I'm holding my hand in the center of the box, I'm at 2,600 lux at this light setting. That's probably good enough. Now when I do this inspection, you'll notice that I'm actually inspecting a mirror. It's a reflective part. And I'll be using a transmissive comparison standard to compare it to. That's not a mistake. That's correct. The Army standard does not allow any provisions for using a reflective comparison standard just because I'm doing a mirror in reflection. So I'll hold the part in at its correct position. Rotate it around to find the imperfections of interest. I can see there's several digs. One scratch that's really quite clear. And some more digs on this side. So this time I'm going to actually look at that scratch first. And I'm going to tip and tilt it to get its maximum visibility. That'll be right about there. I can see that scratch quite well. I'll now compare that visually with the comparison standard. This is the number 60, and I can see that that scratch is more pronounced than the number 60. It's easier to see, it's more visible, and it's much closer to the number 80. I'd say it's just a little bit less visible than the number 80 standard, so I would call that a number 80 scratch. I can visually estimate that scratch length at about six millimeters. If the specification were 8050 and I was only allowed a quarter of a diameter of uh, number 80 scratch, I might go ahead and measure that with a ruler and even use a, a loop to, to check its length. I can see that the scratch is short with respect to the diameter of the part, so I don't need to make any careful measurement. I can just estimate it as less than a quarter of the diameter. Since there are no other scratches, there's no other accumulation concerns. Next, I'm going to do a dig inspection. To do that, I want to blow off any of the dust that's gotten onto the part. And the dig up at the top has not blown away, so let's go ahead and estimate its size. The standard says the size as estimated by the inspector. And you do that estimation in the same way that you did the scratch, but now I'm looking for size as opposed to brightness or visibility. So this is the number 40 comparison standard, and it's real close to the dig that we're looking at right now. I'm going to take a look at the 50 just in case. And it's significantly smaller than the number 50. Now it's quite bright because it's on a mirror but it is smaller. <clears throat> Going back to the number 40, 
I don't see any need to go to the number 20. I know that it's going to be significantly larger than the 20. So I would call that dig a number 40. So we have a number 40 dig, and only one that I can see right now, and a number 80 scratch. There are a couple more smaller digs on there, and if I were doing a careful inspection, I might need to gauge those as well and determine whether or not the part failed for accumulation. But that's just more of the same. The point is to visually peek up the brightness or appearance of each of the imperfections and then compare them visually to the comparison standard set. That's a reflected light inspection method. Thank you very much.